guess what? I am currently blocked in. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> right in front of the driveway. Uh, we will be here for a few hours. Can't get out because they've dug the road up. They were really great to work with. They, uh, they had dump trucks when we had to go get the garage doors and some other parts. Uh, and when we got here, they had the road, it's a uh, oval road that com comes off of another street and then goes around and back onto at another point. They had both ways closed, but I talked to the flagger and they, they've been very accommodating. Great, great bunch of guys. J.A. McDonald. Yeah, they're not paying me for that, but it's a free publicity for them. They're, they're well known in the area. They're a great excavation company. They do a lot of the major road building in the area. Anyway, back to construction. I'm going to be doing the garage doors today. First thing, I'm, so this is going to be putting in the garage doors. I'm going to unpackage all the doors. They, they do a great job of garage door packaging. Oh, they're going to be noisy, aren't they? Try to locate these doors back away from where I'm actually going to be working. So I'm not crowded. We have plenty of room here. So. After all the doors are unpacked, I've, I've got them up there. They're not in order, but these four panels are for one door, and the back four are for the other door. The next step is to get the tracks out and mount those on the openings. I'm going to set out the hardware and sort that out so that uh, totally, woo, totally prepared to go. One box of hardware per door. Carefully <laughs> dump everything. I saved the box to dump all the trash that we de develop. Bracket for the spring, torsion spring. Cables, drums for the cables. Put them all in the same area so I know where they go. Mounting hardware for the track. That's, that'll be the first thing I use. These are the left and right brackets for the rod that the torsion spring goes into. Screws to secure the doors together. This is the mounting hardware for the torsion spring. So this is generally where I start. I've got two door handles, two inside latches, handles. Pretty tough plastic. These are the bottom brackets. They just break apart. Even with my wrist hurting, there's a left and a right for those. Set that there. Two top brackets for the doors. These hinges are numbered. They have a number three. Uh, for a seven foot high door, there'll be a, a number three, a number two, a number one, and then the top and bottom bracket. So, they don't punch the numbers in very well, but I'm pretty sure that's. Those are both threes, these are twos, and ones. You can see the difference here. See the difference in those? A one, a two, a three. <laughs> Sound like Lawrence Welk. A one, a two, a three, and then this is the third one. They graduate, they as the door comes down, these make it so that the door sits steps away basically from the trim. So that's very important to get those in order. 
You can tell by the height of them. Each one steps up. Okay, so sort that. Get all the hardware sorted, move these over there, the screws, and then we'll open up the tracks. Just going to do one door at a side, finish this one so it goes up, so that we're not blocked, so they can, Chad and Dan can get in and out. It's the top track. Another top track. Put that here. Side track. And side track. Securing the, the two, tr they make this pretty easy because they riveted on both of those brackets. It's pretty easy to just put that together like that. I have two drills set up with two different size sockets. So I use the, uh, the carriage bolt. We're up there. And two screws there. These are designed with a shoulder where when you tighten it, it seats down in there, similar to a rivet. I want to make sure you go down through this way. If you come up through here with the, the thread showing through, the door will catch on that, obviously. I tip, sometimes you have to adjust those once they're in place. Typically let it all the way out and tighten that. And then those two screws. Make sure this looks good and it pretty well does. I might adjust that a little bit differently. make sure that this is lined up really well. I want to talk about the rough opening a little bit. It's a 9 by 7 garage door, so we have a king stud, a queen stud. Right here, the header is nine foot three, so the header comes out to here, up up above. Uh, on same on the other side. Then we use a, so that makes an exactly nine feet wide, and to the top of the header it's seven feet high. So we put a filler on to bring it in, so that when the weather strip comes on, it covers the entire uh, edge of the door. Let me back up a little bit. So the nice thing in it, because we built the garage ourselves, we, we know exactly where everything is. If sometimes on an uh, installation on an old garage, you don't know what, what they've done. But the track always will line up, the lag screw will always line up at the center of the king stud based on the way we did the rough opening. So that works pretty good. I built a nice tray on top of my ladder to hold nuts and screws and things. The next step, you can see I've put the wheels and the brackets on both sides, or the hinges. Hinges for the middle ones, they're all in place. I have a bag of screws. I typically just put these in my, my hoodie. Or if, I don't, if I'm not wearing a hoodie, I wear my tool belt as last resort. So let's go put that together. All we need is a door. So we look for the door. 
with a rubber weather strip. So that's how it will end up, but when I put it together, I usually do the door upside down. It's just easier for me. It's easier if I grab <laughs> the correct bracket. Or if I already had the correct bracket. <laughs> I'm in a brain cramp here. Sits down in just like that. There's just uh, two screws on the back to secure it. There's a couple slots on the side of the door. Make sure the bracket goes into that. Pretty important. Okay. So then I usually lay the door down. I fit the first wheel in the track and then into the bracket. Or the, yeah, the bracket. Working my way down. And then same thing on this side. Just picking it up, fitting it in. And there it is. And then hinge number one. Wish they'd stamp those a little better. Put the wheel in like that. Fit it in the track, and away we go. I think after 30 years of doing this, I would have gotten a magnetic bit by now. I have had them. I have lost them. Yeah, it's upside down. I was wondering. Usually, there's, there's a smaller hole and a larger hole. It works well to put the screw for me because that's not magnetic to do it that way. Then you know it's lined up. So that bottom door section has some warning stickers as well as usually the third one. There's another panel that has warning stickers, and I'll put that on the third one putting the glass on top but I'll put it on the third one so it's eye level so people can see it so you can see these are well I don't know if you can see it from there but the lower one sits out further so that as the track goes up this one is designed to be right in between the two panels so you put the wheel in the one that sits up higher or further away from the door. And you line up the panels so they're, they're, they're nice and flush. Hinge number two. Again, putting that wheel on the outer, the one closest to me. Boy, that magnetic bit would sure be nice. Door number three. Okay. The last panel I will do from the stepladder typically. So I pick up those. These brackets always need to be adjusted for me. Always need to be adjusted all the way out. So I just I just do that now. Just slides out and tighten that. If you're using a drill, go careful because all of a sudden that spins in your hands. Yeah. 
And then the last panel, the, the uh, glass panel. It's generally you're okay to let it rest up there because it's hitting the sides and the top a little bit, but it should hang on. <laughs> This bracket goes with the screws down. There's a hole. The, the bottom one always lines up with something. They don't make all the holes the same for some reason so that they line up. But I always go off of this, this one. By going up as high as I can, it turns up above to clear because the ceiling height is eight foot one and a quarter. And the door height is exactly seven, seven feet. <laughs> oh, more and more. I'm thinking about a magnetic bit. Huh, I never have a hard time with these. There we go. Need to grab a cutter screw so I can start a hole up here. really like these. You can see that cutter bit end. Cuts right through there. Then I, So I just saved that and use. I've had this one for a, a while. <laughs> I don't know how long. It gets hot after a while, but that's good for starting a screw for the top. I only put one screw top and bottom. There's not a lot of weight on that once the door comes up, comes out. It's pretty insignificant. What I started to say was the ceiling is eight, or the, the truss height is eight feet, one and a half. The door is exactly seven feet and the track is a 12 inch radius. So it leaves about, about an inch and a half play for a garage door opener to come up over uh, over the door and to be mounted with clearance. That's about all you have for, for clearance. Use my cutter screw to cut the hole at the top. Wow, I'd be fired as a movie producer. I am so sorry, but the next upcoming the next upcoming series of videos, there's no sound because when I took my sweatshirt off, my microphone or my hoodie was on my it was on my hoodie. And it got put in the truck, so it wasn't picking up anything I was saying for the next however long uh, this will be for this next series. But we, I'm back with a microphone. I'll continue on. Okay, voice is back on. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay, gotta hook up the cable first. Alright, bring the 
cable up. Look for that slot. Fits right into. Turn it. You have to keep pretty good tension on that cable as you tighten it. So then I go tight to there and I pull it back just a little bit so there's some play left to right. Hold that snug. And tighten these. Quarter. Half. Three quarters. One. All right, we are ready almost to tighten the torsion spring, except we need to secure the tracks at the back so that when the door comes up, there's support so the door doesn't just crash to the floor. So we'll do that next. So I made this support. It needed the track, inside of the track to the stud is 19 inches up there. So I made it come out to that as well. Perfect, right on 19 inches. So I'll finish, I've screwed it in from this side. I'm just putting screws both sides. Much better. Typically it is eight inches. So over here, we're nine. So we'll pull that up one inch. We'll pre-drill that lag screw so it doesn't split, for the lag screw so it doesn't split. So this needs to come up one inch. There, one side done, do the other. In order to know where to locate this track, left to right, I'll hook, set my tape on the outside of this two by four. It's an inch and a half thick, so I'll just add an inch and a half in theory. I know that the space is supposed to be nine feet, three inches. So we'll make it that. Nine feet three. I put X so I know which side the block is going to go on. I didn't. Here I am. I talk about allowing for it and then I don't do it. Okay. Set it over another inch and a half, or an inch and a half that I didn't allow for. Put it on this side. My intentions were good. To me, this is the most dangerous part of the whole job, is winding the torsion spring. I always get, still get nervous. <laughs> I mean, not terribly. But. So we're going seven and three quarters turns. Make sure these are all set, because when it's under tension, you have to hold it with one hand and then uh, tighten the, the screws with the other. So it's all loose. Here we go. And there's one. Okay. See if it works. Okay, that's a nine by seven all installed, except for the handles. We still have to drill for those. Uh, I'll do a little, I'll show you how I do usually do that. And have to put on the lock. We use just a sliding lock. If you're putting up a, an electric door opener, this should always be removed because if that's locked and you hit the opener, it's gonna tear your door apart or the opener or something, somebody might get hurt. We'll do the uh, handles and that should complete the whole door installation. All right. With the lock, typically two of the holes or one of the holes are gonna fit. 
The others I have to use the, the cutter head. I'm gonna put that on this one. There's a little tab, you just knock that in, just like that. I always have to set this over on this metal band or the latch won't pull back enough. All right, let's go do some handles. One thing you can always count on is the door handles are always too long. Typically you have to cut it off to that shoulder. I found it, this works really well. I just bought this last year, like a uh, hacksaw. So it works good to cut those off. I'll go outside now and uh, line these up. So I find the center mark, 21. So the center is 10 and a half for both of them. One and three quarters this way from, from this little mark, or uh, this little rib here. It's basically three and a half inches wide. So one and three quarters. You kind of want to hit this right on a, when you're drilling a hole into a thousand dollar door. It makes you a little nervous sometimes. Yeah, these doors are a thousand forty dollars now. Nine by seven, insulated with glass. Used to be about five hundred dollars. Okay. So drilling a pilot hole, just a small bit, that will go all the way through. So now we'll drill it out with a half inch bit, all four of them, but we won't go through the inner skin, just the outer part. I'll bore out some of that styrofoam so it fits in a little better. And I'll need a hand, somebody holding it right here. There it is. Goes up and down. And locks. Alright. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. Hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. We'll see you later.